Do you have a face for a dark room? Do people tell you you're ugly? Have you ever looked in the mirror and it cracked? Have you ever been to the zoo and people throw peanuts and food at you? Well, let me tell you what. Why don't you check out Mark's Wrestling Masks on Facebook. That's M-A-R-C apostrophe S. Mark's Wrestling Masks on Facebook. Because that's who keeps our ugly mugs covered too. Welcome to The Shiz Show with your hosts, Vader from Wish and NWO Machine. And NWO Cat. Hey, yo. Welcome to the Shiz Show. This is NWO Machine. And I am... Well, I'm not really running solo, like I mentioned before, so I should say welcome back to the Shiz Show. And it's my lady death friend, Cheryl, who's on Twitter like a little mad machine. And we did a Scott Hall show, and we wanted to talk about positives and some of the positive interactions that we had with Scott being our our friend, where everybody thinks that he had, you know, famous friends. And no, he had a... He had a couple of bozos in different cities and different country, and we got to kind of know a really good person. Am yeah, I correct on that, Cheryl? Friend. Like, the, like yeah, a lot of people. Friend. Yeah. He just, yeah, he had regular Toyota schmo like the rest of us, to be honest with you. <laughs> just a very tall schmo. I can imagine it being Scott Hall, but you know. Yeah, yeah. So. It's good to run into that. The previous episode to this sort of gives your background, and uh, I'm just going to adjust the microphone here, gives your background on how you met Scott, and it was through uh, another wrestler that just kind of took you over to him, because it almost sounded like the way you mentioned, uh, hey, how's he doing to this particular, it, it just sounded like you already knew him, and that's how you got in there by accident. But um, Basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and for me, I worked in radio, and that's where... I ended up uh, getting to know Scott through a, a radio interview. He called the radio station, and I portrayed a, uh, a, a Cuban character, much like the real Scarface, except uh, I was a distributor, and I would bring things in from Colombia, and I and you know we'd play on the air that, and, but I, they would accuse me of oh Colombia, yeah British Colombia, and I bring in apples. That was my big uh, ruse on everybody. <laughs> And Scott just loved it. And yeah, you know, he I'm assuming much like I fell in love with his character, he fell in love with my character. And, and we just became buddies, you know, like one entertainer to another. So I, I sort of knew that version of Scott. And I want to get to Twitter uh, because I've recently shut my Twitter account. And uh, reason being, I just find that Twitter has no interaction anymore. It's literally the same five people or 10 people going, I don't know if you've experienced this, but there's one character who thinks he runs Twitter. And then there's another character who thinks he runs Twitter with this, uh, the queen they call her. I won't mention her name and they fight each other. And so now people are joining forces. You're either on team a or team Z and it just, be yeah, I'm so tired of literally all like I would open my Twitter account. And to see what's going on, to see any interactions happen, and other than you and a couple other like really nice people on there, every second tweet was like, you know, toilet paper is not available. What are you going to scrape your ass with, right? Like, oh, yeah, just uh, wow. uh, you know, like, wrong answers only or whatever. They're so stupid. Anyway, whatever. Enjoy your team S and team Z's. Uh, one got blocked for good, but anyway, so you. I am not, yeah, no, I'm not on Twitter. You can find us on Welcome to the Shiz Show at YouTube. And uh, I've I've also left Spotify because Spotify was really going nowhere and YouTube seems to be the place. There, there's my little backstory of, because uh, people are probably wondering where the NWO machine went on uh, Twitter. But so now let's just go to Twitter for a second because you had not only met with Scott, who loved your artwork he did a lot of artwork on the wrestlers but how was he to play with on twitter because he was 
I think he was pre my account on Twitter. And then sort of as I joined Twitter, he somehow disappeared again. So uh, Yeah, he's like that. Yeah, so yeah. how was your Twitter interaction with him? Oh, at first it was at first when I got on Twitter and saw Skull on there, of course I followed him right off that's like my first follow was him. Yeah. But I found out at first it was his friends who were running it and then it got handed back over to him. Oh, uh, yeah, every once in a while, it'd be his friends running it because, you know, depending on what was going on with them, you know, yeah. sometimes he just wasn't on it. Well, you see how they are on Twitter, and sometimes they say pretty nasty stuff, you know? They're like, just, I don't know, and, and you know what, Cheryl, it's, um, I talked to somebody the other day about Twitter and just society today that I, uh, I, I think eventually, eventually this woke is going to die off and there's going to be a lot of angry people. Like when they realize yeah. you should just laugh at some things and just laugh it off. There's like, I hate to say it, but there's so many of these keyboard warriors who hide behind their keyboard and they try to ruin other people's lives and get joy out of it. And they're the criminals. It's not the person who said they something are. in grade 12. Yeah, they are. They really are. I mean, there was a doubt. I can't remember her name now. A Japanese wrestler that killed herself. Yeah. Yeah. Just the nasty stuff they were saying, and yet, you know, they just kind of high cover, you know. It's like, no, you ain't put that out. That needs to stop. Yeah, just you know, too that's, much. That's messed up. I mean, they do that to Scott, too, and I usually my first response would be if they said they had a bad interaction with him or something is, what did you say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. He's like that. He's a normal person. If you go up and say something stupid to him or something nasty, of course he's going to respond likewise or just go, yeah, I don't want to interact with you. Yeah. And usually it's in silence, so I knew that they did something. If they wouldn't answer me, it's like, yep. <laughs> you know what? I, th <laughs> I think Scott and you, we had this uh, small conversation. I think you and I have had a conversation on the phone too, so I might get some of them mixed up. But Scott... In my mind, he he was not a very confident person in himself, and I know that yeah. sounds hard to believe. Uh, yeah, seeing, uh, yeah, seeing the character, but a lot of the people who have the most charisma are the ones struggling at home. And yeah. let's just Here face it. He, yeah, let's face it. And you and I've had, you know, I've said this, but let's just pretend like you and I had an incident where someone tried to kill us and we turned the weapon on them and did them. And instead you're never yeah. going to get over that. No, right. And no, it was, you're not. it's close range. So yeah, his confidence was shot. He, he always, <laughs> I mean, we've had conversations with Scott where, you know, he says, hey, you know, I'm a bad person, man, you know, like, and you're uh -huh. not. Yeah. You're... He said, yeah, he's basically said that before, and it just, you try to say it to him, but, he, you know, it didn't get through. Yeah, so I honestly. think some of his defense, and this is where I was going on Twitter, because I, I did read, after he was off Twitter or, like, left Twitter and wasn't active on Twitter, you know, I kind of read some of the things that were still residuals on Twitter, and people like to poke the bear. So... Yeah, they shouldn't. They yeah. Really shouldn't. <laughs> if you knew Scott... Like before, like if I would call him, uh, you know, certain things, like he would answer the phone and, and I'd be like, uh, hey, yo, how's it going? And, and he would just give me a, like some rib right off the bat. It's almost like a a pre-defense mechanism with him. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, yeah. He had a wall up all the time. Yeah. He really did. Yeah. And you were able to kind of crack that wall a couple times or bring it down a little bit and, and, and yeah. very lucky. So. <laughs> So again, you so your interactions with with him on Twitter were positive at least. Yeah, they were. A lot of times they were pretty positive. Every once in a while, out of nowhere, I'd be talking to somebody on Twitter, and he'd say, "Hey, yo, out of nowhere." <laughs> I'm like, "What the heck?" And then my friend would just jump it up and down. Go, oh my god! <laughs> and yeah. that'd be it. I don't know. I never caught on. Maybe that was he wanted to DM or talk direct messaging, or if he just was popping in to say, "I'm here." Well, right, maybe just that I know you. It's or, hard with him, you know. You yeah. never know. And I was never one to like DM him. Maybe I should have when he would say that, but I never. I just I always respected a person's privacy. Sure. You 
know, and I felt with Scott, like, you know, he got a lot more private as he got older, especially after all the stuff that came out, and, you know, I don't blame the man. You know, it it's but, uh, uh, it must be so difficult. Like, you know, there's a person that I know uh, here in uh, Parts Unknown, and he's an autograph slash picture seeker. And, yeah. And he said to me one day, uh, he said, well... It's their job to do that. Like I, I don't stalk them, and I call him a I call him a stalker because it, that's what my he he posts picture on Facebook every second day with some kind of celebrity that he's met yeah. or whatever. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, and I've had a very 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 small touch of that in as a local celebrity where I am, where you're out for supper, you're with a girlfriend or your wife or maybe both, and yeah. Um, someone says, "Hey, can I can I get an autograph for my kid?" Or, "Hey, can I take a picture?" And you're kind of a like you're not. It's not in your playbook to say no, right? But it's sort of this unwritten rule. Like you can't tell someone, to, you know, go away, man. I'm eating supper here, right? Like yeah. So I felt bad in a sense that, and I always say I can't imagine like let's say Elvis Presley had to rent an entire theater because he couldn't watch a movie. And it's just not fair to sometimes harass these people at airports. And, no, and, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, uh, and I still, I'm still mad at, like, uh, here's, the, I don't know, we're going to get off topic of Scott, but I never saw Scott turn anybody down. But in today's world, you see guys like Ricochet whining and crying. Now, Ricochet is not even half the star Scott was. Sorry. But... He wasn't. And when Ricochet comes out and says, hey, it's 3 in the morning, I don't feel like taking pictures at an airport, um, I don't think he could have come out and handled that differently. Now, there's, in a small way, I've learned that, you know what, if you just say okay to two or three people instead of ten, you're going to win the game. Right? Yeah. And all you got to do is turn around, take one or two pictures, and go, hey, guys, got to go. And people will understand. But, yeah. if, but if you come out and say, screw you all, like even Rhea Ripley recently kind of came out and said something like she doesn't she was tired she doesn't want to sign autographs well then just tell everybody that say hey I'll you know I'll stop for a picture here I'll talk for a second and I'll go and it alleviates a lot of the guff but Scott was so popular like let's face it he was he was oh Hulk God. Hogan like he was literally Hulk Hogan uh, and so was Nash at the day like those were those were the guys yeah. And everybody wanted a piece of him. Yeah. And yeah, then that's... when a guy hits the low point, that's when the losers of the world come out and try to hit you harder. Right? Uh, well, yeah, they did that pretty bad, too. Yeah. Yeah. Is, that your, is that your husband crying not. in the background or what? No, oh, that's my <laughs> baby bird. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's one of them. Oh, okay. Because well, you might hear NWO <laughs> cat here in a second. Meow. <laughs> He's, uh, he's, I gotta... he's looking around. Yeah, three itty bitties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get mom's attention, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta find but the a laser to, uh, to avoid. I don't know. It's really hard with Scott because I mean I don't know how mentally he was towards the end. I just know that with, with his PTSD, you know, that's officially been put as brain damage. Yeah. On the medical bill. Um. It's like I put a video out, and boy, it hit some people wrong. <laughs> but I put a video out because I used to be addicted to pain pills, so I had an idea of how Scott was feeling on that sense. Um, and you have to focus, like I told people to have addiction, you have to focus your addiction on something good. Yeah. And if you don't, you're going you're gonna to run right back into the same thing. And the worst thing is being by yourself. I mean, I hate to say that, and I know the quarantine probably didn't do him any good there, mm. but good point. I knew once he wasn't, you know, I knew once he wasn't on any social media or anything, I knew that that probably was, in a way, a danger for him. That's no you know, we we try to do kind of a mental health thing too uh, when we're when we you know kind of it hits us, and that you brought a really good point up about sometimes when that addiction hits. It's it's not good to be alone because, <laughs> unfortunately, the brain is such a powerful thing 
that it's going to convince you to yeah take a pill, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah, no, it, but one won't harm you. One won't harm you. You know, yeah, one drink won't yeah. harm. One pill won't harm, and all of a sudden, one turns two to three. Yeah, and. That's where I finally made the video and said, look, people, you can't look at people with addictions the same way you do people that don't have them. For some reason, we're just not hardwired the same. And so when it's simple to go out and just have even maybe a drink at the bar and that, you know, you're good for the night, that's not the same with us. Because once we get that feel-good feeling, you want more and you want more. And before you know it, you got no control. Yeah. And it's just, you know, and so people a lot of times think like, even with me, they think, well, you're boring because you won't go out and do this or that. Well, because I'm trying to keep myself away from things I know cause trouble. Uh, Yeah, that's, you know, for myself, people say, uh, you know, you were way more fun when you used to smoke and drink. And I'm like, yeah, of course I was. (laughs) But uh, Yeah, well, you made you feel fun. You made you feel good. Yeah, and now it's, uh, you know, I try not to go out anywhere. Maybe it's just because I'm older, but uh, I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking. And those are tough things to, to, to drop out of your life. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes those things do help. I hate saying it, but sometimes they do. And then what you said takes over where one turns into two, two turns into three, and then you're having a rough night. It's hard to control. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, I just don't. And usually you got to, people who are addicted want to stop. You know, they want to. And then, like I said, it's hard to stay on that straight edge line, you know? Yeah. And so there's some people that took offense to the video, but I looked at them and said, you really got to look at what I'm saying. Put your addiction towards something good. Yeah. You know, a hobby, whatever you can. <laughs> okay. And before you know it, you'll well, be better off. I stopped smoking. I think we mentioned this the other day. I, I ran past my 21st year of non smoking, and I put that addiction aside, and now I have way nice. too many wrestling belts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't help you there because I got wrestling belts too. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I'd buy them more if I could, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm the same way. Yeah, every every day I, I I you know I'll check the bank account and say I wonder if I got a raise. Nope. Yeah. But we we got a good guy if you're looking for a belt. Like honest to goodness, this Capco Belts, who's part of our sponsorship, it, it has nothing to do with sponsorship saying anything. I was I was buying belts for him pre sponsorship uh, of our show, and he just makes the best belts. I I I've bought belts from other people, and who make the belts and the the quality, the leather. He's just second to none, and if you ask him something, he'll just change it. Like I've never run into a guy who's wow. that customer service. Yeah, he's very good. But nice. uh, okay, check him out. Yeah, Except for sure. I'll, <laughs> I'll, sh- <laughs> I'll shoot you a link. Tell him you listen to the podcast and you're a guest on the podcast, and and uh, yeah, tell him tell him we sent you, as they say. So positive interactions with Scott. Let's let's get off the addiction and. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> we're talking about Scott. So you had some good stuff with uh, Twitter, and yeah, good conversations with him. Um, I had a couple of hey yo's here and there. Um, oh gosh, what was the one conversation we had? Oh, he was looking for uh, videos of people, so I showed him a uh, picture of me where I was holding the um the belt. Yeah, and um. People were just like wanting me to drop the belt because I didn't have my shirt on. I was just holding the belt. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, hey, you had your belt signed by him too, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yep. I should have the tag team. I don't know why I didn't get the tag, one of the tag team belts signed, but I do have the United States belt signed by him. Uh, I think the um, United States belt is probably more important because it has nothing to do with Nash. As, as silly yeah. as that sounds, like, there's no tie to Nash. Scott won the U.S. on his own. Yep. Like, in he my did. opinion, that's a, a better belt. Time. Yeah, that's a better oh, belt. Uh, on a TV title, if you want to go that far, but didn't give him any TV dinners. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, in, to me, I, like, I literally remember Scott as Intercontinental and United States. That's my two yep. that I, I remember from him the most, I guess. And speaking of which, like, when he was on that Maury show... <laughs> I called him, like, because he mentioned, uh, I was talking to him, and he goes, yeah, I got to be on, you know, so-and-so show in a couple days. Make sure you're watching. Yeah, yeah, no problem. 
And uh, so I called him. And if you haven't seen the Maury Povich thing, he, uh, or pardon me, Jerry Springer, I don't know where I got Maury from. No one was pregnant. Um, so Springer uh, had Scott on, and the, the, these two young kids were suffering for uh, from uh, AIDS. And uh, so Scott was appearing with the kids, and as the Intercontinental Champion, long story short, he gave the belt away to the kids. And so I called him after the episode aired. <laughs> And I was like, hey, I could have used the belt. <laughs> you know? And uh, he, yeah, he was, he kind of chuckled, right? And, and I th- like, no one's Scott. Like, I, I, you know, I'm not going to mention what he said to me because it was nothing cruel. It's just that, you know, he was like, well, if you get sick, I'll send you one, you know? But, um, <laughs> but he's, he said to me, you know what? He, like, he, if you watch the clip, Scott actually stands up because he's losing the Razor Ramon character. Uh, he's having a hard time, and you and I both know how much you love kids. Oh yeah. And he he said, like he said, Manny, I was having a hard time, man. I couldn't keep it, and uh, I just stood up and gave the belt. And, and then he goes, as I'm walking back, he goes, I thought Vince was gonna kill me, man. You know. And he phoned Vince as soon as he got, I guess, home or wherever, and Vince said, "You did the right thing." And he never, as far as I'm think, I don't think. Scott ever paid for a new belt. Vince just said you did the right thing. Well, yeah. that's guys. That's a good thing on Vince's part. Well, absolutely. And, and really people, is, like, listen, know? let's face it. Everyone thinks Vince is some curmudgeon. But if he was a that big a curmudgeon, there wouldn't be Connor's cure. He wouldn't send his wrestlers to these appearances. Like, if he was that big a, of a hard person, he wouldn't do all those things. So, not that I'm defending Vince on any other angle but i don't think he's as bad a person as people put him to be oh i just he's a businessman he's a promoter you know yeah. he's got a business first and i'm sure there's times he's put his heart before that too so. sure sure so yeah, yeah that was uh that was one of the scott things and i and i had that conversation um i'm trying to think of it and to me that was really positive i, I told a story on another episode with vader about a positive twist with Scott where he was with a uh, sort of a special needs kid who is in a wheelchair and it was people want an appearance, a a picture appearance with, with him and diesel. And I was backstage obviously. And uh, all the people were around and it was like a 10 minute meet and greet. And in 10 minutes, you know, Nash was gone. Like, you know, like he looked at his watch, right to be 10. And Scott still messing around, of course, because that was Scott. It was had to do with kids. Yep. And there was a sort of special needs kids. And he was in a wheelchair, and he was last. And, you know, Scott played with them and gave him the belt. They took a couple of pictures. And Scott tried to take the, the belt back from the kid, and the kid said, nope. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, and he kind of... No, you know, and he kind of pulled the belt back from Scott, and Scott was doing a little tug of war, and he was like, "Hey, come on, Chico," you know. And then, uh, no, 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 and the kid was giggling, like there was no, you know, malicious intent on the kid. He was just having so much fun with Razor Ramon, and <laughs> Scott, like again, I don't know where this came out of. I don't know how he came up with this to avoid, you know, because the press person is like, you know, they're biting their their nails here, like, well, how oh, is he going to no. get this belt back? From this kid and Scott, Scott says, "Okay, if I pin you, I get my belt back." And the kid was like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah," you know. So Scott tipped his wheelchair like very gently. I should say that he gently tipped the wheelchair back and counted one, two, three, and he put the wheelchair back sort of straight up. And the kid let go, and that was the end of it. It was just the it brought tears to my eyes. I kind of get emotional because I witnessed it. And it's such a good story about this guy. Oh, yeah. He's, he's got such a good heart. Yeah. People are so used to the bad guy image. They don't they don't see that. I mean, I, I tell him all the time, I said, he's the nicest guy to play the greatest bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, and he, he, that, he, that's he really Scott is. 100%. It really is. Yeah. And uh, I know you've had interaction online with uh, his daughter. And a little bit, yeah. She's pretty nice too. Yeah. She's shy, but you know, I understand she's also got to be kind of, you know, iffy on who she talks to because 
Well, she's Scott Hall's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that must be uh, tough too. You know, some days it's got to be tough, and I'm sure when they're kids they don't like it, and as they grow older they kind of do like it, and then when he has his trouble they're like, oh my god, where's the paper bag? Dad, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And then now, now it's, you know, yeah, that was my dad. So I, I, I'm hoping, and it's it does seem like she's very proud of, she was daddy's girl. Like, there's no doubt uh-huh. uh, about it. And I, I do have one, uh, it has nothing even to do with Scott. It's got to do with Cassidy, which is his daughter. And I was heading out that way. He invited me to his house. Said, yeah, come on down. And we planned a weekend and. And I was down in uh, in that area, and it, this is the worst part about it. The day before I was going, he calls me, and he goes, we got a problem. And I said, like, what's the problem? He goes, I'm not going to be here. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, Vince just called and wants us in New York for the show. So... I was like, you got to be kidding me. He goes, no, that's okay, man. Just, you know, come down, check the house. And he says, but, he goes, you got to bring your rollerblades because you're Canadian because my kid doesn't know how to skate, <laughs> As, which was Cody. So, um, yeah, I, so I stayed, uh, in, instead of at his home, I stayed at a, a hotel instead because uh, he wasn't there, so I just didn't feel comfortable. So I stayed, uh, you know, it's nice when the, person is there uh yeah. so yeah last thing i need is a bunch of wrestlers chasing me with accusations and um so i i i stay at a hotel i bring my rollerblades so there i am in the neighborhood and there people are staring at me like i'm from space like who's this meatball on wheels and and i wasn't a very good on rollerblades like i i played goal so i was never a big skater with like player skates kind of thing so i they thought i was wayne gretzky which was fun but, uh, yeah, so I taught Cody how to kind of skate. And then the, the funniest part about this is where the Cassidy thing, there was a scream. I'll never forget this. There was this scream like we thought somebody got killed in the house. So, like, there's me, there's Scott's wife, there's, you know, Cody runs in with me. And Cassidy is <laughs> she's sitting at the supper table. And they had this little dining room table, and we're like, what happened? And she points like up in the ceiling corner and she goes, lizard. <laughs> 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 and I just kind of, don't ask me. I just remember laughing to myself because this little gecko was in the corner, like this harmless little gecko. And, uh, and of course the wife was like, ew, you know, and uh, Cody wasn't too much of a fan. And uh, this gecko, I'll never forget this. This gecko jumped onto the table and I'm not sure how old Cassidy might have been. She might have been maybe five or six, but she was smart. Like, she took a little container, like a, I don't even know, like a plastic sort of, like, little bowl, and she captured this lizard. <laughs> and so I remember telling Scott about, uh, I said, yeah, you know, I said, uh, you know, we, we made the best we could, and... Uh, I actually took his kid. I still have a picture of Cody and I on uh, the Men in Black ride at Universal Studios, and uh, we just had a grand old time uh, hanging out. And and because his wife wouldn't go on any of the rides, so I took Cody on everything, and we just had a good, cool day. You know, Uncle Uncle Machine here taking the kids out. But uh, so, but I remember telling Scott about the lizard, and he goes, "Yeah, that's my girl, man. She ain't afraid of nothing." You know, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he. So I do remember. Uh, yeah, he he sure, he sure loved her. That's for sure. I'm not saying he didn't love the boy, but I just mean that, like you know, he really was proud of Cassidy. Yeah, he. So you could, if you want to get Scott to light up, just talk about his kids. Yeah, yeah. Oh, his eyes will light up. He loved talking about Cody and Cassidy. Yeah. And I don't blame him. You know, I really don't. I mean, that was the light of his life, basically. It really was his family. Yeah, and I, it, with the, I know they went through some rough rough times and uh, things like that, but it was kind of nice to see Cody don the Scott Hall uh, tights kind of thing and uh, wear the vests, and, uh, you know, that was kind of nice too. And, you know, here's another part of uh, Scott. When I first met him, um, 
there's a many people know that I I have uh, an item or two in my own collection of him, and uh, he I used to do impressions of all the wrestlers, and I was having dinner with Scott and Million Dollar Man and Psycho Sid, and there was a couple others sitting around. And Bret Hart came in and avoided us because that was back in the day. The faces wouldn't be with the heels uh. if there was if there was an outsider around. And kayfabe was legit. So uh, Scott had said to me, why why don't you do an impression of me in your show? And I said, well, if you send me a vest, I'll do it. And he gave me his phone number and said call in a week. And that was my literally only my second interaction with Scott this dinner and then when I called him, I, I think I mentioned to you, I don't think I did this on a, on air, but when I called, you just don't know what to call him. You know, I mean, he's Razor Ramon, but I know his real name, but who do I ask for, right? And you know, I phone and his wife answers, and I'm like, uh, why couldn't it just be him? And I'm like, uh, can I speak to Mr. Ramon? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and she kind of laughed. She's, she's still laughing. I guess she took a cordless phone to him, and she goes, oh, Mr. Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah he did uh, I don't have any autographs uh, you and I talked about this you're lucky you got an autograph I, I do have a, um, a a signed and I have it framed it's a piece of paper that it says hey Jimmy blah 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 enjoy the vest razor so it's an authenticated piece at least it's got his handwriting you know personalized to me and uh, the one vest, when he was leaving WWF, uh, he called me and he goes, uh, do you want any other vests? And I said, yeah, I really want the pink vest, pink and black vest. And he was quiet and he said, why? I said, well, you just asked what I wanted. <laughs> right? <laughs> and he's like, why that one? And I'm like, well, long story short, and when I first met him, that's the outfit he wore. It was his pink and black vest and his pink attire, and he fought the tax man. So he was like, uh, he goes, you know how, like, I don't even wear that one. And I'm like, well, you did that day. And uh, he, he told me a story at the time. He says, I actually wasn't allowed to wear that vest after uh, the Ted DiBiase. I think it was Ted DiBiase's match. I know Ted DiBiase's last match, Scott wore that pink, but... I can't remember if it was that that was the day, but he wasn't. A, Vince told him not to wear the pink and black anymore, and uh, and I said, "Well, why not?" He goes, "Because the hitman's crying, right?" And, <laughs> and I know, I know he was friends with Hart. I know they were friends. Yeah. But but uh, he's and then he told me he said, "Bret Hart makes us stink. Anyone wears pink, that's his thing." And Vince just said, "Just put the vest away." <laughs> so I, I got this uh, beautiful pink vest and. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, that's in a nice frame, and he had another vest um, uh, that uh, that was sent out, and he won. I've kind of done a lot of research on the vest uh, situation, and uh, this one was he actually won the Survivor Series wearing the vest to the ring in the red one that I have. Oh so, wow! Yeah, it was Team Bad Guy. And everyone else. Like got better than autographs, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and if uh, if WWE or anyone from WWE is listening from the Treasure Show, no, hard, <laughs> hard no, hard no. My friendship uh, is more valuable uh, than uh, any money you could offer me. But I think I would, uh, if they wanted to do a you know a tribute to him, I would definitely be up for letting them borrow it. Yeah, I could loan out that, you know. Yeah. We do stuff like that, so. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't let a lot of people know that. But that's the kind of guy we're trying to portray here. Like, we're trying to bring some oh. positives to him. Is that, like, there was no, um, it's not like, uh, it's not like there was no thought to it, but there was no second thought. Like, uh -huh. if, if Scott said yes, then it's going to be yes. Right, unless yeah. something happened, like I, I guess uh, that would be my positive on Scott. Like, if you were his friend, there was, there wasn't a word called no. Uh -uh. 
that I knew of. Like, he could have kiboshed the entire trip that I planned, right? Like, I was a nobody. Yeah. I mean, I was just a real entertainer week to week making money. And he, he could have said, hey, man, you know, I can't, you can't do the house thing because I'm not here. But he was like, yeah, just come meet everybody and hang out and do whatever, right? He, then Universal Studios with his kid. I didn't, Maybe Scott didn't want to go on the rides. <laughs> <laughs> I would never know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Child so. right there. I don't know about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, if by chance, you know, if by chance the uh, Cody or Cassidy listen to the show, they are, they can reach out to me and uh, they can find me at NWO underscore machine on TikTok and they can shoot me a message there if they need to. And I'll send them the photos of you know me and me and Cody and the uh, Men in Black ride, and it would be nice to reconnect with them too after. Because honestly, yeah. like. Actually, Cody was a pretty tall kid. He was 12. And I think he was as tall, almost as tall as I was then. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, he, he was a big kid. But who knew he would get taller than Scott, man? Man, oh, man. I know, he is. That's yep. for sure. Yep. But that was what I love about Scott. He treated everybody like, you know, he just treated everybody as the same person, as a person, basically. You know, he didn't act like he was higher than anybody else. Yeah, so they, I, I can't say... You know, for anyone he's ever met, I think you're right. Like, uh, even if you met him in the back or whatever, like, uh, I used that one of my best friends who also passed away, maybe it's me, uh, that um, he always, and at his funeral, like, a, a fr- long story short, this friend's funeral, I started off doing my speech, it was saying, yeah. saying this. You know, I looked at uh, the urn and I looked at the audience and I went, you know what? I never really liked him. And uh, people were like, <gasps> and, uh, and by the end of it, like if anybody knew this person, if he, if he didn't like you, he would always tell you like, uh, <laughs> I would say, hey, hey, Smitty, what do you think of so-and-so? He goes, eh, I never really liked that guy. Meanwhile, he'd always joke with him. If he joked with you, he loved you. And that's sort of how I ended my uh, little eulogy speech was, so back to the beginning where I never really liked him. I didn't. I loved the guy. And anyone who was lucky enough to know the person you and I did, we loved that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a truthful guy. You, in, a business, in a business full of sharks, okay, let's just say for what it is. It's a business full of sharks. Everybody wants to be on top. Yeah. <laughs> he was the most blunt truthful person and very nice but you better be you better be ready if you ask for scott's opinion you're gonna get scott's opinion yeah yeah that isn't always gonna be great all the time just so people know that's yeah. how he was but at least you knew at the end of the day he gave me the truth yeah he gave me his honest opinion or you know what he really thought and that's what made him such a unique person yeah, yeah, he just, uh, yeah, yeah, and maybe that's where some people didn't like Scott because, you know, if he was yeah, if you're if you don't like the truth, you're gonna think he's a bad guy. <laughs> but uh, me, well, I think some people took it wrong, and it's just like, well, you asked for his opinion or you asked for the truth, he told you. Yeah, and, and you know what? You're gonna people gotta learn. Like, do you want his opinion or do you want your opinion to come out of his mouth? Right Basically. and. Yeah, and that's and again going back to Twitter. That's what Twitter is. Everybody's opinion is wrong unless it's yours coming out of their mouth. Yep. So uh, I'll give you a last word if you got one on Scott, and that'll be our 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 finale here of uh, you know, cheers to Scott Hall. I know his birthday is coming up in October, so we yeah, we wanted to get a nice good positive <laughs> pieces out for him. Yes, the guy celebrates Scott's birthday. I always try to do a countdown to that and see what I can do for that one. But, yeah, I mean, it's the people who, who did know him, he just was really a really one-of-a-kind person. You're, I mean, I will be, I won't be around the bush. What Kevin Nash said on that point is that there goes a person you're never, you're never going to see another person like him. Yeah. And he's right. He's 100% right. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. That, that really is a one-of-a-kind person. Hey, and, on, a, on a side note, 
because I'm going to forget to say this. Uh, I know you saw it. I just recently, I designed a tattoo um, based on Scott's vest and uh, the blood drips. And I just had the artwork finally done on my arm. So uh, I'm going to throw that up on the YouTube uh, picture side of things. So. Oh, yeah. People love to see that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. it's. Uh, like that. And I have, I have it on the uh, inside of my bicep leading down into what they call the ditch area and uh, where they usually draw blood. And that's my warped sense of humor is I wanted the blood drips where they take blood. <laughs> Yeah, because now when they go, uh, when I go give blood, they're going to say, where do you want me to take it from? I said, well, take it from the blood. <laughs> so. Somehow I have a feeling Scott would probably get a good, strange humor out of it. Yeah, that. he probably would, and uh, hopefully I <laughs> hopefully I, I did him well on this. So uh, where am I finding you on the Twitter machine? <laughs> on the Twitter machine? Oh, yep. uh, lazy dad, the usual. <laughs> Okay, Lady Death, look her up. And uh, yep. on TikTok, you got some great videos. You like you post a couple of clips of uh, Scott Hall and Razor stuff. So where am I finding you on TikTok? TikTok is, and my name's called all, but it's Lady Death 1981 is the address for it. Lady Death 1981 on the TikTok. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, Cheryl, we'll talk again because I actually want to chat wrestling with you when I'm back with Vader. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, see and, how Vader is. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, listen, Vader's going to have to take this machine back and untangle the damn cords that he gave me because I, I give up already. I don't know what the heck's going on around here. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, like we always say, uh, Cheryl, you keep kicking out, and we'll catch you next time. Yeah, I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.